All right, guys. AFC Championship game. New England Patriots versus Pittsburgh Steelers. New England making it to their sixth straight AFC Championship game. 11th for Brady and Belichick together. And I got to be biased. Even though I am a Pats fan, I think the Pats will win. But if the Pats play like how they played against Houston, against Pittsburgh, without a doubt, Pittsburgh would win. Because if New England makes turnover after turnover, like Houston's offense had nothing. That's the only reason why New England won that game, in my opinion. This is coming from a Pats fan. If Houston had a Pittsburgh offense with Le'Veon Bell, Big Ben, and Antonio Brown... They would score touchdown after touchdown after touchdown after those turnovers. The two picks and the fumble by Deion Lewis. So, if Pittsburgh plays, I mean, uh, if New England plays awful offensively like they did against uh, Houston, we'll lose. But if we come out on fire and tear apart their defense, I believe New England would win. So, I'm really... Going back and forth here. It's hard to tell. Obviously, as a Pats fan, I will pick New England to win. It ain't easy. I know how tough Pittsburgh is. We did play Pittsburgh with like 99% of their offense earlier on the season, but Big Ben was out, and I do get that's a key factor. But at the same time, it may not be because Patriots went 3-1 without Brady. We didn't play the best teams either, but we did play Arizona's defense, which is a top defense. So, uh, my guess, I'll say New England wins, uh, let's say, I'm going to say 24 to 21 in overtime is what I'll say. That That's my, uh, my official prediction. Either way, I'm going to keep the numbers the same, whether Pittsburgh wins or New England wins. I'm going to say the field going overtime seals the deal. So I hope you guys all enjoy this. I'm pretty sure I put an exhibition game by accident. So it might take longer than it's supposed to. But I usually sit here and I hold the A button to skip stuff. So you don't have to worry about uh, having too long of a video to watch. But hope you all enjoy. I'll see you guys all in the end of the video. was a wide receiver the first three years of high school. Sitting behind the coach's son. And then he finally got that opportunity. I think he's made the most of it. It's always the coach's son, isn't it? But you know where it helps him? When he looks downfield, he knows what the receivers are going to do. He actually has wide receivers' eyes when he's throwing the ball. Over the middle, it's caught by Rodgers. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. And that's one of his advantages of a passer, is it not? With his height, setting back there in the pocket, firing it over the middle, he can really see everything clearly. It is, and I know that other quarterbacks get it done different ways, all right? You don't have to be his height to make a great play. But what he does is he takes away having to make those slide steps in the pocket to find angles to throw the ball through. He just throws right over the top of it because he can see everything. And sometimes that saves time and gets the ball to a receiver quicker. So it is third down now, but less than a yard to go. Here's the first carry for Le'Veon Bell. Room here to run. 18 yards there and a first down. It's funny, partner. Le'Veon Bell, when he came out of Michigan State, when I go back and look at my analysis of him and what my grades were for him, I thought he was a big-time player, great potential. But I didn't know we were going to get this player. I was used to a big, solid, thick running back. But now, I get a full package, a guy who can do everything, as we just saw there, including breaking tackles. But at the time, second round pick in 2013, some people probably wishing they'd taken him in the first. And here comes play number six on this drive. Second down, it's Bell. And he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. Well, that play, the expression, don't blink, you might miss something, certainly applied. That was fast. Defense diagnosed the play, and it was over in a heartbeat. The seventh play now of this opening drive. This is third and long, though. 
Now Ben on third and long. This is Bell on the dump off. Give him eight on the play, and that's going to make it fourth down. And they're getting him involved early. You feel like they saw something on tape, or they just have a sense with him because he's had a good week of practice or something in that area. But they want him involved, just as you said. They want him to touch it either in the running game or the passing game, but they must like the matchups they're getting. And Boswell's kick is good. And the Steelers will jump out to a three-zip lead. I know a lot of my defensive brethren do not even like to bring up the names of kickers. Like, like, why do they even exist? But, boy, they can win you a game, can't they? Chris Boswell, six field goals, beats Kansas City and sets an NFL record. Yeah, tip of the cap. Made the one you just saw, but six is six. All 18 points for the Steelers to send them to the AFC title game. Well done. Doesn't hurt that he kicks in Pittsburgh, gets used to some of that bad yep. weather and handled the elements in Kansas City and advanced the Steelers on in the playoffs. After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. Danny Amendola on the return. And not a bad return. Here he gets it out to the 25-yard line. carry for LeGarrette Blunt. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. again with Blunt. Able to get away. <laughs> That's why you keep the legs churning. And he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. But when it comes to the running game, the New England Patriots, they're one of the few teams in the NFL that I don't think care much about balancing things <laughs> out. <laughs> Last year, to your point, fifth in passing yardage, number 30 in the run game. What they want to do each and every week is make a game plan based on their opponent, not so much their own personnel, and they try to attack that way. On third and long, it's Brady. And now a fumble. Brady loses the football. A call it luck or skill, whatever the case is, they're feeling good about just keeping the football there. Yeah, the biggest thing that they're calling it now, our ball. <laughs> I mean, they don't care if it was luck or skill. Boy, the panic that jumps up in your chest when that ball's on the ground. Whether you get it or your teammate gets it, just as long as you maintain possession, that's all you're looking for. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. Now Brown. Nice job bringing that one back. 14 on the return. And the Steeler offense, they're set up nicely as they take over. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Here's Roethlisberger. Throw complete there. Rodgers. Give him a couple on the catch. It's second and eight. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. Counting down toward the midway point in quarter one. They come out here in the eye. Now Roethlisberger going to hand the bell. No gain on the play there, so that doesn't help. Now they're looking up at a third and nine situation. In a 3-4 defense there and against the run, a lot of responsibility can fall on that nose tackle. 
a ton of responsibility, no pun intended, because they got to deal with not just the center, both guards, and a lot of times they have to eat up double teams in order to let the rest of the guys get to the football. But how about that play? You know, he didn't eat up the double team. He ate up the ball carrier as well. I was going to say, talking about puns, you said eat up the double team. He's got his man here. It's green. And into the end zone. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Ladarius Green, 44 yards. And the Steelers are going to add on to their lead. Boy, it's nice to have that big, reliable target you can go to. Each and every time. A lot of people see that position as a fallback. Throw it to them when all else fails. Not at all. This guy can make plays, and that's exactly what he just did. Yeah, play here for a touchdown. The drive there only spanning three plays. And it ends with the Steelers finding the end zone. well now to kick it away after the touchdown now Jones and a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30 yard line now the Patriots offense they work their way back out onto the field and on the first drive three and out and I know that these are professional athletes but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still don't you those don't ever go away and typically what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing if you don't have nerves at the start of a game it's not gonna be a great day for you you're not really ready to play so finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way that's what all the guys are looking for. He finds Malcolm Mitchell here. He got 29 yards that time. One of the selling points of the in route is against the quarterback, a really nice sight line to his receiver, and almost on a direct shot, able to throw the ball into the middle of the field and have a great chance of success, as they did on that play. Brady now on first down. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. And defensively, the starting 11 for Pittsburgh and this crew, they made the defenses of yore in the Steel City very proud in the divisional round of the playoffs, did they not? Ever since they reinserted James Harrison back into the lineup as a starter, they are undefeated in 2016. And he's 38 years old. <laughs> but I don't think anyone takes care of his body any better than James Harrison and then produces on the field. And on the opposite side, how about the youngster Bud Dupree, another outside linebacker, has really come along. And they do look like the Pittsburgh defenses of old. And it's incomplete. Malcolm Mitchell out of the University of Georgia was the intended receiver. Third down here. Ten yards to go on third. Throwing is Brady on third down. This is White on the screen. And he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. A nice pick up there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. Let's give a little credit there. The offensive play caller sends that the screen pass was available. Whenever you're getting a lot of heavy pressure towards your quarterback, that's when you're thinking about running the screen and using that pressure against the defense. And it worked very well there for a first down. Brady now on first down. And over the middle to the tight end, Bennett. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. A nice pick up there, 10 yards, and it'll move the sticks. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, 
you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. It, he's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. That was a nice catch, but unable to stay in bounds. And remember, it wasn't a wide receiver who works on that all the time. I was going to say, he, he likes to get the ball handed to him. Now, don't get me wrong, he's part of the passing game as well, but maybe a little out of his comfort zone there. Yeah, he might want to have a few words to say to us about that later, but I am still going with you on that one. Wide receivers work out a little bit more. Here's Bull, and he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. It's a loss of two, now third down. Let's just go ahead and go back through that play with his eyes because he's got to read his keys. Run or pass right off the top. You're probably going to read an offensive lineman to see if he sets up in pass protection or if he fires out for a running play. The next thing is you kind of check and see what the back's going to do. And if he ends up with the football, okay, now you've got to check and see. Does an offensive lineman come downfield and try and block you? Are you going to try to elude him? Are you going to take him on? And that's going to be caught for a Patriot touchdown. They're big tight end. 20-yard touchdown, and the Patriots are back within a score. Oh, such great concentration there, going right up against the side of the end zone, but able to get the feet in bounds. There are so many things that go into that catch, and you just mentioned the concentration, being able to catch the football, get your feet down in bounds, hang on to it all the way through the process of the catch. That was a phenomenal play. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays, and it ends with a New England touchdown. Goskowski now after the touchdown. He'll send this one away. This is taken at his four. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. come the Steelers and that recipe on their last drive that resulted in a touchdown looked pretty good so they'll be hoping to do that once more it takes me back to when we sat with the offense coordinator and the head coach they felt pretty good about their game plan and thought there were some holes in the defense and they exploited them the last time out let's see if they can come back and put together a similar drive and we'll see if they can do just that well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height, sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed. But when you have that type of height, he can stay in there. If he's willing to take the hits and just fire over the top, which saves him time and actually completes a play a little bit quicker than it normally does for a quarterback has to slide and find open space to throw. He'll wind up losing three, and now it's third down. To me, that's a superior play by the backer because he was allowed to, I think, run free on it and make that play. His defensive linemen, they covered things down for him because offensive guys, the linemen, what they're trying to do, as you know, is block the guy at the point of attack and then climb to the next level and get the linebacker. And you're not allowed to climb. You got a free hitter, and that's what we saw there. And a really nice play resulted for them. A pickup of five that time and a first down. On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. Play fake here on first down. Shakes off the sack. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Rob Ninkovich in there to bury him for a loss of 11. And we talk about players blitzing all the time. I 
often laugh and sometimes call it just straight ahead pursuit. What a running start right back to the backfield for him. Yeah, it really didn't give anybody a chance to get up there and stop him. No, I mean, that's really, really difficult. You're asking a whole lot anyway, but when he gets that kind of a start and comes through clean, oftentimes the advantage definitely goes to the defensive player. So back with Charles Davis, Brandon Gaunt. It's Steeler football to begin quarter number two. They do, however, have a tough third and long coming up. third and long goes underneath for Bell and he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds so many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game get your best players into space with the football in their hands that's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner get him out in the flat and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field there to stop it. Hits at the eight, but it carries all the way into the end zone for a touchback. The Steelers defense getting ready here for this next possession. And in a tight ball game like this, the defense looking for a stop. You kind of, if whether you're the offense or the defense, you don't want to be the one to screw this thing up. No, not at all. And right now, you've got to figure that the offense is thinking to themselves, if you just get us the ball, we'll, be, we'll make things happen for you. Just help us out a little bit. And that's what the defense has to have in mind as they trot out here for this series. Yeah, right now, the offense on the sideline. Can the defense do it? Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he's brought down after a good game. I've got to make sure that I don't take Tom Brady's greatness for granted, that we make it routine. How about that throw right there? Yeah. Another, another great completion. And you know one area where he honed his throwing? He was a catcher in high school. He was actually drafted by the Expos in 1995 in the 18th round. Well, that would have been something to see him behind the dish. Think he gunned down a few guys? Gunned down a few guys trying to steal second. That would have been fun to watch. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll get this into enemy territory, but not by much as he's down to the 48. Lawrence Timmons, the linebacker, there to get him down. In order to play really good run defense when you're playing a 3-4, those three guys up front, the nose tackle and the guys they call the defensive ends, they're usually big, big people because they're going to have to eat up a lot of blockers because it's usually five on three. And when they do their job well, guys who play on the inside, those inside linebackers, they're able to just roam and hit. Finding time. Over the middle, that's caught by Hogan. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. He had time, was able to survey the field and find a soft spot in that zone coverage. And that's where it gets difficult for a defender, Brandon. You go to your spots on the field that you have to cover, and when the offense finds an area that you're not in, that's where they throw the football. The Steelers insert their nickel defense on third down. Yeah, they add a DB. Shotgun now for Brady. And he'll have his man. That's Edelman. And he gets it to the 34. Good enough for the first. The former seventh-round pick, Julian Edelman, just continues to have such a productive career. And has made himself into a receiver. Remember, he was a college quarterback, and not just a productive one, a very good one. At Kent State, right? Yes, a great leader, a guy who could make plays with his feet and his arm. Got to the NFL and had to convert into being a receiver and was drafted that way. And that conversion, <laughs> oh boy, it's been good. Brady gives now to Blunt. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage. It'll be back at the 36. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Brandon, that play ended so fast, it's almost as if the quarterback handed it to the runner and the tackler was there right away for a loss of yardage. On second down, here's Brady. He's got time in the pocket, and he's just going to get rid of this thing. To no one here, he throws it away, and now it's third. And here comes play number six on this drive. So now a third and 12 with an extra defender here in the secondary, a nickel long. 
Throwing is Brady on third down. Over the middle, the catch made by Mitchell. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. The slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. Blunt, the lone running back. Now flags come in. Looked like one of the Patriots might have moved. False start, offense. Still first down. So the penalty by the offense, and now they face a first and 15. Working from the gun, it's Brady. Amendola catching it left side. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. In recent years, the slot receivers really gained stature in the NFL because they can do so many things. Yes, they can line up wide like your normal wide receiver, but to have that kind of courage and toughness to run routes in the middle of the field and become dependable targets for their quarterbacks and move the sticks, those guys are worth their weight in gold. Again, they'll throw with Brady. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. That winds up pushing him back 11 yards on the sack. And that'll bring up third. Well, this has been a pretty sizable drive. They've had some success. Finally, the defensive coordinator found some success of his own. I think he just simply said enough of that. Okay, they've moved the ball well. We need to force the issue from our end, and that's exactly what he did. Now flags come in. Looked like one of the Patriots might have moved. False start, offense. Still third down. And following that penalty, the offense really backed up now on third down. From the gun, it's Brady. To the right side, it's caught by Mitchell. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. Well, that's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath, by all means. Goskowski now for the Pats' field goal try. From the right hash, this from 53. And this one will not get there. It's off to the left anyway. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Now Roethlisberger to throw on second down. And his throw here is incomplete. Holding offense. So holding by the offense and maybe now got to shift up what you want to do on the playbook. Yeah, definitely. Change what you're doing in the playbook, but boy, the advantage shifts to the guys on defense, doesn't it? Longer yardage situations, they often become bolder. So the defense has put them in a tough spot. It's second and long. After the penalty, it's Bell. 
And he takes this up right near the 45-yard line. Call it seven yards on the carry, so a pretty good gain, but still left with a tough third and eight. That was a really nice run there to bring up third and short. After the incompletion on first down, it's awfully nice to have a running back that you can hand it to and put you back in a good situation. They come up in an empty set. Four wide receivers, one tight end. On third down, Roethlisberger. Man open left side is Brown. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. Forget Bright Lights, big city, partner. It's Bright Lights, big stage, <laughs> NFL playoffs. That's Antonio Brown. Antonio Brown likes all of that. Six catches, 108 yards against the Chiefs. And by the way, <clears throat> excuse me, tied an NFL record held by Larry Fitzgerald with his fourth straight postseason 100-yard performance. Pretty good. See? What did I say again? Bright lights, big stage, playoffs, <laughs> Antonio Brown. And a little too much mustard on that one. It hits a couple yards into the end zone. A missed opportunity there maybe to pin him back. Here comes Tom Brady and the Patriot offense back onto the field. Been a decent start for him here in this first half, but bottom line, his team's losing. They got to fix something. And it starts with him. He has to keep that little quarterback strut going right now to make sure that his team sees him as confident. Continue to try and up his game, but just let him know, hey, if I come around, if I'm the one calling signals and throwing the football, just follow me, we'll get there. Sometimes that will do more to elevate a team than anything else. See if he has that confidence. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. Second down and four. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage, look defensively. Now Brady throwing on second down. And complete on the right side to Bennett. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Some runs are blocked so well, you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. Second down following the run. Again, here's Blunt. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. Two minutes to play here in the first half. Back to Foxborough after this. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll pay a visit to Larry Ridley in Orlando with our EA Sports Halftime Report. On first and 10, here's Brady. Trying to squeeze it into Edelman, and it's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And the return stops just a few yards shy of midfield. They'll spot the ball at the 47-yard line. This is such a good read defensively. They know that this offense is going to try to get the ball to their playmaker in space. So what do they do? They crowd him and send bodies at him. And this one winds up being intercepted. Now the Steelers' offense gets ready to get back onto the field. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you called before and realize it hasn't worked <laughs> Go to so something well. else. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. On 
First and ten, it's Roethlisberger. And his throw is incomplete. Antonio Brown, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. Second and ten. It's Roethlisberger once more. Surveying the field. Wide open receiver complete. And he's taken down, but not before reaching the ten-yard line. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. They'll come out in the pistol. They'll throw on first down with Roethlisberger. He's got time. Throw left side is complete to Rodgers. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. They'll put two receivers left, two to the right. Throwing again, it's Roethlisberger. And he'll get this down inside the five to the four before he's out of bounds. Call it a gain of five. And that's going to bring up an interesting third and goal. Great footwork there, Charles, to dot the I, stay in bounds, get both feet in. He's probably thinking, though, man, I made a catch like that that close to the end zone. I should have scored. Yeah, there's always a regret when you're that close to the goal line. But let's go back to what you talked about before, getting his feet down. Would you say dotting the I? Mm -hmm. I can cross the T as well. That was excellent footwork to get in bounds and make a great catch. And incomplete. He had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fourth. For the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. From the left hash, a chip shot here. And Boswell's kick is good. And the lead stretches to six here. It's 13-7. So give them three there. A good drive gets them inside the five, but they couldn't punch it in. And credit this defense, too. That was the old bend-but-don't-break approach. But it kept the offense out of the end zone. After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. Now Amendola. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Out comes the New England offense to see what they can do this time. And what do you think goes on here in this situation? If you got the football, you're trailing, you're back in your own territory with just a little time. Do you try something? You're thinking about jump-starting your team, right? You just mentioned it. They're down. They're trying to get back into the game. But you've got to figure 
If something goes wrong, you may have put yourself in a spot where you may not be able to come back in the second half. Managing risk, this is a big decision here. They go back to the air here after the INT. Finding time. Oh, he can't get away, and Brady will go down. James Harrison able to drop him for a loss of a couple. And on that one, the protection just broke down. You've got to have that leverage, don't you? We always talk about low man wins in the running game for an offensive lineman versus a defensive lineman. It's essentially the same thing in pass protection. Get lower than that defensive lineman so that you can keep your balance and keep him away from your guy trying to throw the football. Come on, not fair. What Garrett Blunt, the 30, 20, 10, 5, and he's in for the touchdown on the final play of the first half. The prayer is answered. How did they get that done? And it's up and good. So we reach, and never mind, Larry. These two teams apparently anxious to get back at it. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. This will be fielded at the six. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. And now out come the Patriots. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking for some separation here as we begin the third quarter. I like the way you turn that because... Now I think they go a little bit deeper into their playbook. They like what they did in the first half. That worked okay. But in order to get the separation that you just talked about, change things up a little bit. Change your tendencies. Try and hit them a little bit more with some things they didn't see in the first half. Let's we'll see if they do just that. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Boy, that's a lot of sirloin steak to be taken down for no gain, partner. <laughs> Are you trying to suggest that he is a huge man? He is Not a just big, a big man, big, a huge man. Big, big boy. Well, how about the credit then for the defense to be able to chop that big tree and put him on the ground? I know back when you played, it took four of you to take a guy like that down, right? Well, that's for sure. And you know what, know what else? I didn't want to challenge him at dinner either. <laughs> Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. And finding Edelman underneath, that's a recipe for success. Typical route for a good slot receiver, and Edelman's one of the best in the game. Knows how to go inside what one of my college coaches used to call the briar patch. Got to go in there where it's tough and make those tough catches. And not only can he do it, he can often run away from people after the catch. An extra defensive back in the game now here for third and four. And he'll have his man, that's Edelman. And he's got the first down yardage as he takes it down to the 49. I don't care how many times we see it. I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass trait in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And some room to work. And he's brought down. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. So much for halftime adjustments by the defense because you know they had to talk about it. The entire first half, they struggled to contain it. And here he is coming out in the second half and establishing the same tone. Still running the football with authority. Still gaining big yardage. So I just figure in the offensive side, they said there is no adjustment. Until they slow us down, keep going at them, keep handing them the football. Oh, he's got some breathing room. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Patriot touchdown. LeGarrette Blunt, his second touchdown of the night. And the Patriots add on to their lead. Not only touchdown number two for him, but a big run to boot. However, still trailing. Still trailing, but not because of his efforts. Boy, he's playing really well, and I love his long speed there, right? Able to get out there and burst all the way to the end zone. And smart enough 
to keep the ball in his hands and get into the end zone for the touchdown. In, in 2016, on all levels of football, we're seeing guys drop it before the goal line. What's the rule, Brandon? Run into the goal, to the post, goal post That's right. before you, you drop the ball. That. There you go. Goskowski now after the touchdown. He'll send this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And the decision to bring it out, a good one, as he's up a yard or two shy of the 30. A look at the offense now here, coming back out on the road for their first possession of the second half. They trail offense, first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half. Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. Shocker. Try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. See what they have up their sleeve. And they get 28 yards on that one. And it'll give the Steelers a first down. I like watching the wide receiver screen because it's a real teamwork play. Because guess what? The guy catching the ball, he'll get all the credit. But how about the people up to block in front of him, either fellow receivers or offensive linemen? That makes that play a really nice timing play, and sometimes it can break big. Again, we'll see the pistol here. Throwing now, Roethlisberger on first down. Throws a quick hitter on the slant. That's complete. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. That was a nicely run slam route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and get the quarterback a really nice target. Now Roethlisberger to throw on second down. To the sideline, and oh, that's well done. Able to drag the feet, he's going to have the first down. Was that a receiver? <laughs> yeah, actually it was. It was a running back who was a receiver on the play. ike has been spending time in the receiver drills getting his feet down. Well, those guys out of the backfield, they got to be good, agile with their feet. He showed the agility there with a toe tap. No doubt about it. It's like he'd gone to ballet school. Got the toes down and stayed in bounds. Now Roethlisberger. He's got time in the pocket. Toward the right sideline, but it's incomplete. He was looking to hit his running back, Le'Veon Bell, that time. And it's second down. And on second and ten now. Second and ten now. It's Roethlisberger. Hayward Bay has it over the middle. The reception good for seven. It's third down. And this time they go underneath for a simple pitch and catch. And not only do you get the pitch and catch, Brandon, but you're able to keep the receiver moving when you hit him with the drag route. So here we go, a third down after the second down pass completion. Roethlisberger now to throw on third down. He gets it to Brown, complete. The pickup of 11, and it moves the chains. Some think the teams really won't throw a slant route unless you have a receiver that has a lot of stature to him. But sometimes the little guys, they get lost in there. People can't really locate them, and they run that quick cut on the slant, and oftentimes they can turn it into big plays. Fresh set of downs here. From the red zone now, here's Roethlisberger on first down. That's complete, right around the eight. It's a nice pickup of 12 yards, and it gives him a first and goal. Quick pass play there on the slant, Charles. Works out well for the offense. The offense loves it. The defender hates it. Hard to get through the body of the receiver to get to the football trying to cover a slant. Thank <laughs> you. 
Now Bell. And he gets halfway home from the four down to the two-yard line. They know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. On second down, Roethlisberger. And he just chucked that one out of bounds, out of everyone's reach. Maybe a wise call not to take a sack in this part of the field. It brings up third down. It looked like he might have had a window there, but the rhythm was just a little bit off. It certainly was, because everything that has to come together to get a pass completed, yeah, you're right, the sink just wasn't there. From the two-yard line yet again, let's see what they can do on third and goal. Third and two, now Roethlisberger surveying the field, and he'll just toss it away. So he throws it away, and that brings up fourth down. Now Chris Boswell for the Steelers field goal try. This is less than an extra point, just a 19-yard attempt. And Boswell's kick is good. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. So make it three field goals for him now. And this last one tightens things up a bit. And I know that offense is on the sideline right about now, checking out the tablets and saying, man, we let a good chance slip away there. We've got to start finishing some of these drives. After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. This one fielded at the five. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Now the Patriot offense set to take over again. And they were able to punch it in the end zone last time. They'll be looking to do that again here for the defense. Obviously, they'll be looking to stop them from punching it back in the end zone. It always is punch counter punch, isn't it? And which team has the advantage? Well, let's just go back. Last time on offense, they rolled downfield, got into a good rhythm. You can see a little more bounce in and out of the huddle. You can see the sideline really get into the game. So defensively, you're thinking to yourself, how do we take that away from them? How do we get the advantage back? Let's see what they come up with. I think pressure is always the first way to go. <laughs> you love pressure. Let's, I love it. Let's see if they dial it up this drive. And he'll get this up only to about the 33. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Let's give a lot of credit to the offensive line. They've been able to move the ball really well on the ground the entire game. And while that wasn't a huge one, that's okay. They'll take them in short, steady bursts. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Now Blunt. And for one of the first times tonight, he's going to be held up at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. And there's a nice stop for the defense. They've had a tough time containing this guy all game long, but maybe they can build a little bit off of that play, a little bit of confidence, a little bit of momentum. Yeah, every now and then you can actually tackle that guy. Throwing is Brady on third down. And he will find his man. That's Hogan complete. And he's got the first down yardage as he brings this up to the 47. So he makes the grab and the chains move forward. Nice job by the offensive line giving them time to complete that first down pass. They go play action here on first down. Deep drop. And he was hit as he threw it there, and it forces it incomplete. 
Now, partner, let me take a quick turn here and ask you about the Dallas Cowboys, their season on the whole, because what an incredible regular season, great storylines, but then they lost at home to Green Bay. Their season, a success or a failure? The NFL is a results-based group, as we well know, all right? Did you win the Super Bowl or didn't you? So in that case, it wasn't a success for Dallas, but I don't really buy into that. I think this season was a success because it sets them up for more runs towards getting to the Super Bowl. Two winning Super Bowl trophies. Look at how young they are at quarterback, at running back. The defense plays way better than anyone expected. I think their future is very bright, and I think they'll be back. That crossing route is so effective when you hit it just right because you get a guy on the move, and then we see the end result there. Nightmare for the defense. They got a guy with a full head of steam. Not only does he catch it, but he picks up additional yardage after it. They'll run it now out of the gun. And not much to speak of there. Maybe a yard down to the 20. James Harrison, the veteran, in on the stop. Well, praise has to go to the guys in the offensive line because they've had a very nice, productive day running the football. How about that poor defensive line? They've been knocked around the entire game, and while they slowed them down on that run, can they continue to do so? Because they haven't had much success throughout this ball game. Blunt, the lone running back. Brady to throw on second down. It's caught out right, Amendola. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Patriot touchdown. Danny Amendola from 19 yards away. And the Patriots add six to their lead. As a former DB, you might not like to see that, but from a wide receiver's perspective, those are the plays they dream of. Correct on both counts, <laughs> all right? Because once he took off, I mean, let's face it, that should have been done in big sky country. There aren't any speed <laughs> limits out there, and off he went. Glad I wasn't the one trying to chase him. So that drives seven plays in length, and it's finished off by a Pats touchdown. Goskowski now, after the touchdown, he'll send this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. Personal foul, face mask, defense. Charles, I know it's hard when live bullets are flying, but you cannot keep your hand up around the face mask area. It is absolutely inexcusable nowadays. We talk about target areas all the time. You have to aim lower so that your hand doesn't get involved in the face mask. They come up with one running back. That's Bell. On first down, it's Roethlisberger. And it's caught over the middle by the tight end, Green. 15 yards through the air and a first down. And after that completion, you can understand why so many teams in the league are emphasizing speed on defense at every position. The tight ends have created so many tough matchups now. If you can't run with a tight end as a linebacker, this is going to be the result every time. Now Roethlisberger on first down. He's got time. Still back there. Looking deep down. That's caught inside the 20. And he's going to be taken down, but back now in Foxborough. It's the Steelers with the football, but trailing here as we get going in quarter number four. And now a first down following that long gain. Brown, the lone receiver left. From the red zone now, here's Roethlisberger on first down. Man open right side, it's Rodgers. That throw good for four. It's second down. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, 
why not go back to it? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. Roethlisberger with a give to Bell. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. Call it a gain of a yard, and it's going to bring up third and five. The best defensive linemen, they play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands. So they can throw people off on a play. We just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position. Now Roethlisberger. Oh, it's a touchdown if he holds on. Instead, it's fourth down. I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they were unsuccessful. Okay, so thought they might go for it here down late. Instead, they trot out the field goal unit. And Boswell's kick is good. And the drive will wind up yielding three. So no problems there with that one as they're able to put three up on the board. Yeah, it's pretty much a windless night. There's only a very light breeze, so it's a perfect night for kickers. And like you say, no problems with that one. After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. This is taken at his four. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. So the Patriots coming out now. And they'll be looking to build off of a nice drive last time, a drive that really relied on the quarterback. Making good decisions, distributing the ball well, distributing it accurately, keep, keeping it away from danger. A really nicely run drive. But now the defense, what adjustments do they need to make in the passing game? Pass rush, pass rush, pass rush. Whether it's the guys up front, or maybe you bring additional guys, but you've got to disrupt the timing of them throwing the yeah, football. We'll see if they can disrupt it here. Well, he didn't make headway on that one, but he's had plenty of carries all night long. I just wonder if maybe he's a little bit tired from toting the rock that much. Ten yards still left on second down. Now a carry for Blunt. And for one of the first times tonight, he's going to be held up at the line of scrimmage. So following the run, we'll see what they do here on third down. Throwing is Brady on third down. Sets up the screen to Lewis. Fighting him off. Just ran right through the trash. Well, the screen gets seven, but it's not enough. And it will be fourth down. They dialed up the screen pass on third down, and for a second, it looked like it was all going to come together, and they had a chance to pick up a first down, but the defense got there and finished it off. Here's Ryan Allen now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. Forty-six on his first kick, this one in that neighborhood as well. With it is Brown. Oh, spinning away. A good return there. Call it 13 yards. And the Steelers will go on offense here. First and 10. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. And they had three points last time. But they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point the kicker. Exactly. <laughs> he put it through the post. That's going to help him at contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him at contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. Too bad. I don't know about that. <laughs> Super tough. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. 
And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. They go play action here on first down. He's going to loft one deep. And at the 7-yard line, the catch is made. They get 39 yards out of that one. And the Steelers are going to have a first and goal. And at this stage, down in the second half, looks like they just wanted to find a way to get it in the hands of their playmaker, and they did. I think you're exactly right. I don't think the coordinator's looking at his play sheet and trying to figure out which play will work well. He's trying to figure out how to get the ball to the playmaker that you just described. Looking down at that sheet, you find people plays, not necessarily X's and O's, and that's exactly what they did there. That throw good for four. It's second down. And there's another completion to the tight end. And let's face it, it is hard to overthrow a six foot six inch target. It is indeed. Quarterbacks like their speed guys. They like that huge six six target that they've got in him. They really do. And it reminds me of what one great tight end told me once. He had told his quarterback, just make sure you throw it up there. You know, kind of like put up on the top shelf where the kids can't get it. They'll try and run it in with Bell. And he'll get blown up behind the line scrimmage back at the six so he loses three yards there now third down on goal to goal runs when you create lost yardage plays the only way that happens is either called pressure or what I like to call straight ahead pursuit a great read and they get to the backfield and make the play and that was a big chunk of yardage loss on third and goal Roethlisberger finding time and this is going to be incomplete. He was trying to find Ladarius Green there as tied in. And that brings up fourth down. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. From the left half, should be a fairly easy one here. And Boswell's kick is good. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. So yet another field goal to end a drive. That has been a very common theme. He's now hit five of them in this game. Yeah, Brandon, as an offense, you hate that you've had to call on your kicker so often. But you have to love the fact that time and time again, he's come through. After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And last year that would have been a net gain of five on the return. This year he stopped where he would have been if he had taken a knee. And that's at the 25. And the Patriots gearing up to go now. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with a game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. They start on the ground here with Blunt. And not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team defensive tackles because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles and when he can make a play himself as we just saw there that's a big day they'll run it here with blunt and he gets this one just shy of the 40 they'll mark him down at the 39 it's a gain of 11 yards that time and it produces a new set of downs and he continues to pile up the yardage. That puts him over a buck 50 now. And this defense has really had its problems trying to keep him contained. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Now a handoff here to his running back. Two yards on the pick up there. It'll be second and eight. And after 
after the play on the ground. That brings up second down here. They'll run it now out of the gun. And three yards there takes him to the 45. And the defense in desperate need of a stop. They have to get off the field and get the ball back to their offense if they want a chance. Here's Brady to throw. Caught left side, Bennett. And able to pick up the first across midfield to the 47. Nine yards on the pick up there, and it keeps the drive alive. Time for a break. We'll come back, see what transpires after this. So the Patriots with a football as we get your reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. They'll give it to him right up the gut. And now the Steelers put a stop to the action with a timeout defensively. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. See if they stay on the ground for second down. They'll give it to him right up the gut. And the Steelers signal for another timeout. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. Now play number seven of the drive as they're looking at a third and ten. They'll run it here. This is James White. Just a yard on the run there, and that's going to bring us to a fourth down. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. Here's Ryan Allen now as he's on to punt for New England. He gets it away, and I think they'll smartly play keep away here from Brown. The Steelers' offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And after the field goal last time, let's we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive in with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. And this one caught by Coates. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. Brown, the lone receiver left. Back to throw. And seeing no options, he just tosses this one away incomplete. Now that'll bring up second down. Right. 
So the incomplete pass brings up second down. Back to throw. He's got time in the pocket. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And that's caught inside the 35. So oftentimes you see defensive holding. Here it's offensive holding for the flag. They come up in an empty set. Four wide receivers, one tight end. He'll look to throw. And he finds a man on the crossing round. The reception good for seven. It's third down. The Patriots going with a dime package here. Two extra defensive backs on third. They'll look to throw. And able to find Green. A big play on third there for the Steelers. 41 yards. Well, how about keeping your head about you in this situation? No more timeouts. Finds a way to get out of bounds. Now they can breathe a little bit as they contemplate what to do on the next down. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. Now whistles here before the snap, but it looks like one of the Steelers may have moved. False start, offense. He's back to throw. And is caught right at the 10-yard line. And he's going to take it in for a Steeler touchdown. Jesse James in the final minute. And if the Steelers can convert the extra point, they will have the lead. And now we've got a tie game after that touchdown. And you and I both know what that means. Extra point in this situation, this little time left takes on some extra emphasis, doesn't it? It does indeed. Now inside the final minute, can they get it and hold on? The drive summary that time, five plays. And it ends with a Pittsburgh touchdown. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. This will be taken in at the one. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. The Patriots offense now. They work their way back onto the field. They only need a field goal. Obviously, the clock a huge factor. They'll be watching that. What do they need to do here, Charles? Your sequence of plays has to get you out of bounds. Completions, get out of bounds, gain some yardage. Then when the clock hits seven seconds or left, now you've got a decision. Are you in field goal range or is it Hail Mary time? Because from seven seconds down, you don't want to take a shot that you're going to have another play. We'll see how they handle it. So second and 10 here. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage, look defensively. Back to throw, Brady. Surveying the field. Over the middle, and it's...
It's incomplete. Julian Edelman, the intended receiver, and it'll bring up third down. Good job by the O-line quarterback. Had time to go through his checks. That's one you need to take advantage of. A perfect situation, and they're unable to take advantage of it. When you have that much time to scan the field, you have to find an open receiver. So here we go now. An extra defensive back in there on third and ten. To throw is Brady. And incomplete. He had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fourth. One score down. Here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. Now Brady got to have this one. He's got time. He's going to let it fly. And that is incomplete. So the grab there by the defense, the holding penalty call. So here we go, first and ten now. I'm here all day. I'm here all day. Wait, 20. Now Brady. Finding time. And that is incomplete. Down to 15 seconds now. They got pressure there and only rushing three. And there's a defensive coordinator right now who is celebrating not just getting home with three there, but realizing if that's the type of pressure he can get in the entire game, then his pass defense is going to be excellent. You're dropping eight. Where are you going to go with the football? Now flags come in. Looked like one of the Patriots might have moved. Ball start, offense. So the defense has put them in a tough spot. It's second and long. Brady to throw. He's got time in the pocket. Going underneath to Blood. And he showed off a nice juke of the defender before the next wave could bring him down. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. And we're back. The offense had a chance to talk things over. We'll see what they come up with here on this next play. Short of the sticks after that completion, and now it's third down for this offense. One receiver left, three to the right. Back to throw. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. He was looking for Julian Edelman that time, and it's fourth down. It's always tough for the guys throwing the football when they think they've got a completion. All right, so I'm going to assume this next play is last play of the game. So win or lose, I was pretty damn close to what I thought was going to happen. I knew it was going to be a close game by a long shot. Obviously, I wish the Pats win on Sunday because I'm a Pats fan. But either way, that was a great game. Uh, who are you throwing to? Gronk team, Brady. But uh, anyways, I hope you all enjoyed that. So if my simulations are both right, the Super Bowl is Green Bay versus Pittsburgh again. I would much rather see the Super Bowl I've been waiting for, which is Pats and Green Bay, but Madden has it otherwise. So I hope you all enjoyed. I'll see you all for Super Bowl 51 simulation and other videos in between. Hope you all enjoyed that. Good luck, New England and Pittsburgh.